would like to present myself. I am a humble physician, I'm an internist, and I was 27 years head of Department of Medicine, but at the same time, I would regard myself as autoimmunologist, which means I'm working uh, on autoimmune disease, and we have instituted a special uh, center for autoimmune disease. We are working on the different factors which are involved. You can see on this slide, maybe you will see eventually, the different factors that we have uh, analyzed in the last years, including nutritional factors, as well as environmental factors which may induce the disease uh, or not. And uh, you will see in a minute. And therefore, we have also instituted the journal Autoimmunity Reviews, which has quite a high impact factor on which we summarize many of the lectures. So um, I can do a lot, oh, here you can see it. So you can see also the pollution, you can see uh, coffee, which is good, chocolate, which is good, salt, which is bad, etc. It will pertain actually in the future also for auto uh, immune psychiatric diseases. I have to apologize that I wanted to talk in French, but my French is not so good. So in contrast to Marion, I will continue in English, but in French accent, because you didn't have French accent. So be it as it may, uh, I will discuss one example which may be a wonderful proof that autoimmune diseases can be, that psychiatric diseases can be induced by autoantibodies. I will dwell also into experimental model, and eventually I might suggest also, as you mentioned, Marion, a new kind of therapy, which is already known for 2,000 years, as you will see in the middle. I would like to invite all of you to the Congress of Autoimmunity, which I have decided following this meeting, that we will expand several sessions for psychiatric diseases <coughs> as an autoimmune in this meeting which will take place in Lisbon. And uh, as you will see, I will refer also to the famous book, uh, Perfume, which actually happened in France, and you will see why I will do it. In that meeting in the Congress, we will have for the first time the Academy of Autoimmune Diseases, and I think that we should in this academy, teaching academy, expand it also to the psychiatric diseases. So, autoimmune diseases, we have at least 80. If we will add the psychiatric condition, most probably it will be expanded to more than 100 diseases. They constitute about 20% of the population, and they are considered among the five major contribution to morbidity and mortality. So they are significant. Actually, they are more prevalent than cancer, they are more prevalent than um, a, even allergy, and more prevalent than a cardiac autoimmune disease. They are increased during the last years, and it's not because we can diagnose them better, because we have a lot of environmental factors, which in this beautiful room, uh, room I don't see them, that you will see that may contribute to this induction of autoimmune disease. To make the story very simplified, we have published our seminal book on mosaic of autoimmunity in 1988, and this year we are updating it, and I can tell you that everything that will be mentioned in the current issue was not known in 1988 when we started with it. So basically, autoimmune diseases are multifactorial, and you need that the factors will play in concert to induce a specific disease in a specific person. There is no question that all autoimmune diseases are genetic. Also, some of the psychiatric diseases are genetic, as you will see later on. I will not touch about immune deficiencies. It most probably will be touched by others. I will not touch so much about hormonal. Why most autoimmune diseases are prevalent in females. 74% of all autoimmune diseases occur in females. But I will touch a little bit about the environmental factor which are extremely important. So basically, you will develop a disease if you have the genetic background and it is combined by kind of an environmental factor. 
What does it mean, environmental factor? It may be bacteria, virus, EB virus, responsible for 33 different autoimmune uh, diseases. But you need something in the environment to stimulate you more and to deviate your immune system to suddenly react against your own constituents, autoantibodies, autoreactive cells. So what does it mean genetic? We can predict who will develop autoimmune diseases. One of the questions is to ask if you come from a family with a high incidence of different autoimmune diseases. And one of the questions that I ask is always about thyroid. And never I receive, uh, receive an answer, no. Always I receive my father, my grandmother, my mother, myself, my daughter, and so forth. So what does it mean to have a genetic background to develop autoimmune disease? So I will take one of the markers, it's only one, we have genes, we have markers like HLA markers, and I will take the notorious HLA DRB1 polymorphism, which we have published a paper about it, and this is one table of the paper which indicates high prevalence of this HLA DRB1 polymorphism among patients with autoimmune disease, and we will have to analyze also patients with psychiatric disease to see if it pertains also uh, for them. So you see that almost every autoimmune disease, this is just one table, has a high prevalence. Moreover, those who develop two or three autoimmune diseases, they have even higher prevalence. Why? Why people who carry the HLA DRB1 are more prone to develop autoimmune disease? Because they have an aggressive immune system. They have a better immune system. They have a commando immune system. And therefore, they can overcome infection like cholera, salmonella, etc., and so forth. And you can understand that they had advantage in evolution because they could overcome this disease, and this is a paper from an unknown journal called Nature, indicating that indeed they had an advantage uh, in evolution. So what happens is that we will compare it into two cars. One uh, racing car like Lamborghini or Ferrari, which drives in 300 kilometers per hour, and suddenly you stimulate, you ignite it more, you do something, and then it turns upside down and you will develop eventually, actually, like this, an autoimmune disease, as you can see here. But if you drive a Fiat 500, which is called Cinquecento, and you will stimulate it, it will deviate a little bit from the road because it drives only in 50 kilometers per hour, and then return to the road. So those people who have a very strong, active immune system, they will be the one who will develop autoimmune disease if they will encounter in the environment something which has adjuvant effects. Adjuvant comes from the Latin word adjuvare, to help, and therefore vaccine in some individual who are prone can induce autoimmune diseases. Silicon implant in the breast, even though they were considered to be in, uh, inert to the immune system, they are adjuvant, they can stimulate the immune system. Bacteria can induce autoimmune because they have adjuvant. Actually, what is Freund adjuvant in the laboratory? This is dead mycobacteria. So now that we understand it, we can go to one of the classical autoimmune diseases, which is depicted here in the picture of Goya. You see, you see the servant who was a medical student, understood it and tried to shade the sun from this beautiful girl with the malar uh, rash, etc. So this is really one of the famous pictures depicting systemic lupus erythematosus. So what is characterizing actually systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, systemic? Almost every tissue or organ in our body and every cell can be attacked by uh, different autoantibodies and autoreactive cells. And indeed, one of the interesting manifestations are in the brain. And there are, just in the brain, 19 different uh, presentations, clinical presentations from seizures to severe headache and so forth. But we are interested more in the psychiatric manifestation that you can see here, like cognitive dysfunction, mood disorder, and psychosis. 
So we have a classical autoimmune disease in which we have described 180 different autoantibodies in this disease, and the patients are characterized suddenly by psychotic attack or major depression, etc. So immediately it may allude to the idea that these manifestations are also caused by autoimmune reaction or autoantibodies, and indeed in the past many mechanisms uh, were delineated in the literature to explain suddenly the psychiatric manifestations of lupus. And as you can see, many of these were related to different autoantibodies. I will skip the anti-NMDA because I know that there are experts in the audience which will talk about it. And I will refer to only one autoantibody that we have worked with, which is called the anti-P ribosomal antibody, in which you can see that this is one out of 20 autoantibodies that were reported to associate with psychiatric manifestation. So as you can see, one autoantibody that we will concentrate, but it may elude or project to other autoantibodies, and this is the anti-P ribosomal antibody, and we will refer to the three very interesting psychiatric manifestations in a somatic classical autoimmune systemic lupus erythematosus. So what do we know about antiperibosomal? It's highly specific for lupus, but does not appear in all patients with lupus. Only 20%, by the way, it is genetically determined. In Chinese, you can find 40%. In blacks, you can find 20%, and in Caucasian, only 10%. It correlates with anti-DNA. Actually, it is positive in patients with lupus, also with the anti-DNA, the classic uh, autoantibody in lupus, is um, negative, as you can see. And the presence also correlates with the clinical activity of the disease. So our study started with Eloisa Bonfa, a very well-known researcher, from San Paulo, who went for a postdoc in New York. And her aim was to find out correlation between the title of antiperibosomal and psychiatric manifestation, psychosis and depression, and she found it. This paper was submitted to very unknown journal, New England Journal of Medicine. And the editor decided to publish it. Why, for God's sake, New England Journal of Medicine published a paper of association. This is not the high science. It's not association, it's not an evidence for causation that the antibody can cause it. But the editor in those days who were very clever, they understood that they start or pave the background for this wonderful Congress here in Paris in this beautiful uh, hall. They understood that this might be the first evidence that psychiatric manifestation can be caused by an autoimmune uh, mechanism. And the reason is that I can tell you from being a, a physician treating patients with lupus, that when they have psychosis, we treat the disease, not the psychosis, and the psychiatric manifestation evaporates. So it seems that if you can deal with the mechanism, which is autoimmune mechanism, you can cure, so to speak, the psychiatric manifestation. So after Elio Eloisa Bonfa published this paper, as you can imagine, immediately there were an avalanche of letters to the editor and papers showing that there is no correlation. Some of them showed that there is correlation. And she was insulted. And therefore, she went back to Rio de Janeiro, eh, to Sao Paulo, and never ever published any more paper about antiperibosomal. But being her friend, I realized that there is some kind of potential here. And despite all these papers, which some of them show correlation, some of them didn't show correlation, and we know why there are correlations. Where is Riyadh? Riyadh, raise your hand. Riyadh. So, some of them, the sera were taken when the patient were in active position. Some of them was taken retroactively. So that's one of the explanations for the discrepancy. So our 
collaboration on thyroid autoimmunity and psychiatric manifestation, as I understood from you yesterday with a wonderful uh, foie gras, that uh, you took the blood from the patient who were very active. So in any case, we decided to go to our collaborative mice. They are very educated mice. They are university graduates. We treat them very elegantly and ethically, as you can see, because we don't them, want them to be recognized by their peers. And I'm worried that in the next study that we will do, Marion and Riyadh, we'll have to sign, the, every mouse has to sign informed consent before starting uh, these examinations. And we collaborate with a wonderful... Two minutes. No, impossible. Go ahead. So I will skip the slide in two minutes. I will talk. Uh, so we collaborated with a wonderful, a wonderful couple who are married for more than 40 years and work in the same laboratory, and they are still married, which is a paper by itself. So they purified for us antiperibosomal. I will skip all my slides, as you can see. That was not the aim. We injected the antiperibosomal directly into the uh, brain of the mice. The mice developed depression, as was seen by different studies, including the water maze that you know very well, as you can see here. And it has been shown that indeed the mice developed, as you can see, a very interesting binding to the brain. We have analyzed where in the brain it is affected and it was to the limbic area, which is associated with the smell. So this was a great surprise for me as an internist. I went to read in the literature, and I found that there is correlation between smell defects as well as depression. And we went back to our mice. We showed that the antibodies penetrate the cells. And we went and we asked the mice, do you smell well? No, they didn't smell well. Those who got the antiperimosomal had a defect in the smell, and those were the ones who developed the depression. As you can see in this study, as you can see, he is very depressed, this mouse. So we went to patients with SLE who had actually um, a depression, and we measured the smell, as you will see. They were depressed. And they were depressed, and they had no sense of smell. This is raises, Marion, a new therapy, which is aroma therapy. So we went to the mice again, and we knew that orange and lavender can change your mood completely. By the way, I asked my secretary to put a flash which dispersed lavender and orange in my room, and since then, all my students, they enter into the room smiling constantly, as you can see. So we get to the mice also this smell of aromatherapy, and they started to swim in the water. So we cured the depression that was induced by autoantibody, the antiperibosoma, just by smell. So we have to look for receptors of the smell and not only T cell receptor, B cell receptor, and so forth. We did many studies of smell in our patients. The patients who had psychiatric manifestation had many defects in smell. We physicians ignore smell. We don't ask the patient, do you smell, or do you have problems of smell, etc. And we needed the Nobel Prize winners in 2004 to reveal us that there are 1,000 genes for smell. It's true that in human beings, almost two-thirds are involuted. But still, we have so many genes for smell that must be or might be very important. Companies know about it. When you go to the uh, 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 market and you buy tennis ball and you pick up one of the tennis balls, you don't know why did you pick up this specific tennis ball. It's because the company splash, splashed the smell of the grass, and it affected your conscious, as you can see eventually. So, because despite the fact that the name of our uh, <laughs> our uh, chairperson is uh, uh, Sharon, and he limited me, and I want to stand in the two minutes that he gave me, I want to finish with um, five Jews who actually completely changed the world, because I'm Jewish too, as you know. So the first one was Moses, who said, as you know, low is above all, is everything. And then, as you can see, Jesus came and said, love 
is everything. And then who came? Came Marx and said, money is everything. So who changed all this? Freud, who came and said, sex is everything. By the way, sex is also smell, but I will not talk about it. And who was the one that I was very happy to see that Marion cited him very well? It was Einstein who said that everything is relative. So as you can see, I went in the National Academy of Sciences in Washington to see the big statue of Einstein and came closer to see what is written in the book that he is holding in the knees. It was written that everything is autoimmune until proven otherwise. <laughs> Marion, you were, sitting, you were sitting, wait, give me 10 seconds. Marion was sitting in my room at the Center of Autoimmunity and I told her, I believe that you think that some auto uh, uh, psychiatric diseases are autoimmune. So she answered me, all psychiatric diseases are of an autoimmune origin. So I think that I stood also in time, and this is the red and the white wine, which are autoimmune wine, and thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>